Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we have Dave Burks, who is a Director of Product Marketing for Seagate Technology. Welcome, Dave. Thanks, Linus. And we are going to be talking about a few different things, including the Barracuda XT drive. We're also going to be talking about general trends with the hard drive space. Uh, we're going to be talking about, oh, this is, this is interesting. We're going to be talking about, oh, where'd it go? I have, aha, two dimes in my pocket, 20 cents. We're going to be talking about the significance of 20 cents. Yes. And uh -huh. finally, the future trends of desktop hard drives in terms of density, reliability, and cost. So why don't we get started with you telling me a little bit about the power of one. Okay, the power of one is sort of the slogan we're using in relation to our new product launch for our new Barracuda product family. Uh, Barracuda has you know, been around for years and everybody seems to be familiar with it. Um, but what we're doing is we're introducing our first one terabyte per disk capacity drive. And so that's a pretty big milestone in the industry. And uh, it basically means that we're able to cram a whole terabyte of data onto you know one platter, two heads right. of a three and a half inch hard drive. And so that's kind of where the power of one comes in. But the secondary message around the power of one is we're doing two different things with our desktop product category. We're consolidating a little bit. Currently c consists of a Barracuda green drive, right. a Barracuda drive, and a Barracuda XT. Right. And so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna phase out our Barracuda Green Drive. And we can, that, that's where the two dimes comes in. We can okay. talk about that. And, and then uh, our Barracuda XT Drive is actually uh, no firm date to announce, but our Barracuda XT Drive is gonna migrate to be the home of uh, solid state hybrid technology in the desktop eventually. So, so you guys are consolidating hard drives down to one SKU essentially one traditional rotating hard drive skew barracuda okay. for the desktop right you know notebook is different and then yeah so the and then the barracuda xd high performance is going to be different product solid line state hybrid eventually right okay so let's <clears throat> talk a little bit about that consolidation of the of the product lineup and this is where the two dimes comes in and tell me a little bit i think we have a slide about this i'm just going to kind of yeah, yeah there it is tell me about the two dime story and why we're getting rid of, is it 5,400 or 5,900 RPM? Ours is 5,900 RPM. 5,900 RPM drives, two yeah. dimes, 20 cents. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let me show you where 20 cents comes in. This, this okay. little equation up here is, uh, is an equation that I've done that basically shows you how much it costs to run a typical desktop computer at different RPM speeds uh, in electricity. And so, uh, 2,400 is, is the average number of hours your computer is on the desktop. That's what the industry figures. And the 5.4 is the average power in watts of a, of a green drive or a 5,400 to 5,900 RPM drive. You multiply by that or divide by 1,000 to get kilowatts. And then, and then you multiply that by, the, by how much your electricity charges you for a kilowatt hour. Anyway, that complicated equation. $1.70 is what it costs you for a green drive. $1.90 for a 7200 <laughs> RPM drive. So I'm sorry to dispel the myth here, folks, but uh, you only save about 20 cents a year in your typical green drive. But Dave, my green drive was cheaper in the first place. Well, it may be cheaper, but uh, there's no real reason for it to be cheaper. Okay, so what you're saying then is that it costs the same or similar to produce a 7200 RPM drive as a 5900 RPM drive. Yeah, essentially, yeah. I mean, there's really no same number of components. They're the same overhead in manufacturing and stuff. And as a matter of fact, it actually takes us longer to test a slower drive to actually certify all the data on there. Right. But um, so so yeah, the it's really a, a, a positioning thing more than a, than a, a a cost of goods perspective. Well, I can tell you from the retailer side of things, that's that's where I come from, obviously, that it's uh, beneficial to have fewer SKUs because it's less overhead for us. So that's gonna help us deliver better price points. And if every customer now gets <clears throat> 7,200 RPM performance for the same price, right. regardless of anything else, then well, I see this as a major win. And that's our message. If you don't mind, I wanna just show you this sure. slide, which is people often ask, can you, can you really get more performance out of 7200 the answer is yes but you can go ahead and keep <laughs> well talking. the answer is yes i mean i wish i could say that this was as fast as our hybrid drives and they're not but you do get faster performance because it's all about getting data into that cpu and so right. if you take two similarly you know uh spec hard drives into same aerial density and heads and so on then a 5400 rpm drive essentially runs about 30 percent slower and so i think on this slide here this gives you some sense about what you're giving up 
right. to get that 20 cents is you're giving up performance, which could lead to productivity. And I've just got a slide here that you know says if you if you you know if you have a worker that's making 20 dollars an hour, they don't have to save much time to get that money back far in excess <laughs> that, of that the 20 point. cents. Yeah, so <laughs> that's our story there. Okay, and I would suggest, given my ex experience and real world usage, that a 7200 RPM drive performs significantly better than 33 percent faster than a 5400 RPM drive. Because remember, Dave here is talking brand new numbers. I'm talking, you know, crudded down OS with Yahoo toolbar this and, you know, eight different instant messaging clients that when it gets bogged down far more, there's a deep, deep queue of, of instructions to be read from the drive. Right. So with that head moving around and that disk spinning slower, I would suggest that the 7200 RPM is significantly faster. Well, and let me just tell you that you Hard drive technology is getting harder to do, and okay. you're going to see a period where the prices are, are not going to be coming down as historically they have, and that's that's all the more reason why 7200 is just cheap performance. So here's the, here's something then, because in the recent history, in recent history, we've seen a few different improvements that have given us significantly more capacity. So one of them is perpendicular recording. Mm -hmm. So uh, you guys were all about that when it when it first happened. I believe you were the first with a perpendicular drive. I think we were right in there, yeah. I, I mean, I we were so. sure talking about it a lot. And you have a little, they, there's a great little song, I believe, about perpendicular recording. So you guys should check that out. Just Google it I'm somewhere. I'm gonna look for that. Yeah, uh, go ahead and look for that. It's pretty neat. Um, so perpendicular recording allowed us, instead of writing the data longitudinally on the drive, we're able to take that and flip, flip it. it. So we get more density that way. Okay, now 4K sectors, which uh, really were overdue, um, yeah. allowed us to reduce the overhead on the drive. But what are we able to achieve in terms of actual physical implementation on the disk to make drives more dense and I guess uh, stay as reliable yeah. or more reliable? Well, the uh, you know in this generation of our product, we've actually uh, squeeze the tracks a lot closer together. Okay, so slide about, about that, right? 40 closer and now we're actually ah. achieving track densities of 340,000 tracks per inch and just to give you some perspective about how dense that is if you're to measure those tracks they'd be about 75 nanometers and I picked up this little analogy it's kind of gross but it's actually smaller than a flu virus that you right. don't want to breathe in during flu season and to give you a little more uh, perspective uh, spinning at 7,200 RPMs, that head that's tracking is experiencing 85 mile an hour winds. Okay. And so that's hurricane force winds, and we're trying to track at that. So the technology that we've implemented to help us improve, we've actually improved our tracking, we call AccuTrack. It's actually microactuation. Microactuation is where we've put two little uh, piezoelectric actuators at the very end of the swing arm out near the head that allows that head to adjust to about seven nanometers of accuracy. And that is, I mean, it, the, the scale here is really amazing, but um, that technology is essentially stuff that's been used in the enterprise called microactuation. And what we've done is we've uh, miniaturized it, cost reduced it, and made it so that we could deploy it on the consumer level of our products and get just fantastic performance out of it. And, and that's reliability. nano actuation. Nano actuation. Nano actuation. Okay, so basically what you're trying to tell me then is that we're gonna be looking at an enterprise technology here that's gonna give us better data density and more reliability at the same time. Yeah, and it's also gonna bring costs down a little bit too because the, you know we're, cost per gigabyte is coming down. And right, so. and I guess this comes down to that power of one thing because right. ultimately if you guys don't have a different technology for desktop and enterprise, you're only doing the R&D once, you might as well. Well, we still have enterprise drives because there's right. additional functionality that the okay. enterprise needs that is still more expensive. But, but we are taking some very sophisticated technology and we're deploying it in a in a platform that will ship you know hundreds of millions on in you know at some price points less than a hundred dollars. So I, I think wow. that's a pretty amazing story. So speaking of price points, storage keeps getting cheaper and cheaper. Um, I mean, you alluded to that we might not see. I mean, we've always seen densities going like this. Mm -hmm and costs going like this, sort of, at the same time. Yeah. I mean, it, have we reached the point where we're at the limit of, you know, whether we can scale capacity like that? Yeah. Um, and is there a limit to how much storage we need? Is it okay? 
Well, you know, we're not quite at the limit, but it's definitely slowing down. Uh, squeezing the bits closer together and the tracks closer together is getting really, really tough. Some of the technology that's being looked at is actually taking the performance in a different direction. One of them that comes to mind is called shingled magnetic recording, where in order to get the tracks closer together, you actually overlay the tracks oh, wow. like a shingle. Okay. Uh, problem is that when you rewrite your data, you have to rewrite tracks. And so uh, that's going to be challenging in terms of how to implement that. So that'd be great for reads. It'd be great for reads. So potentially something like, uh, wait, no. Like a write once implementation would be fantastic. Right, okay. Um, or, a, or a situation where you could delay your writes or, or uh, you know, cache them or something like that. Right. Cloud storage could certainly take advantage of this. Uh, but yeah, you got to wonder whether or not uh, four terabytes in the desktop is, is enough. And, and so I think that's why we're certainly kind of betting more on the performance side with, you know, going to 7,200 all, all across the board as well right. as, you know, implementing more hybrid technology because we think uh, that's where uh, consumers are really going to be focusing more is to get more bang for their buck out of their systems. So I'm going to wander away and get a prop, and I'm going to leave you here on your own talking about hybrid drives on the desktop, uh, particularly the Barracuda XT. So tell me whatever you can about it. I'm just going to grab it. Well, the Barracuda XT drive, uh, again, we don't have a time frame to announce yet, but it's going to be the first product that's going to be shipping in the desktop form factor, three and a half inch form factor. So today we ship the Momentus XT hybrid drive in the two and a half inch form factor, right. but the uh, especially the channel environment is such a vibrant environment for performance and for those types of things to be latched onto. We're really excited about that potential. Okay, awesome. So is the is the Barracuda XT going to perform significantly better than the Momentus XT? Is that the plan? Well, it'll probably be an iteration of performance improvement okay. um, because it's going to take some new things that we've got slated for the hybrid technology, and uh, it'll go a little okay. bit beyond the, the previous generation drive. Um, it'll definitely have a, a little bit better cost per gigabyte uh, performance because of the form factor in and of itself. Three and a half inch drives have always had that advantage over two and a half inch drives. Right. So it'll be an iterative improvement in terms of cost per gigabyte, an iterative improvement in terms of performance, and it'll be that form factor that we, you know, as, as I mentioned before, is very, very popular and sells a lot of drives in the channel environment. Speaking of that form factor, this was just along the lines of the, uh, the is four terabytes in a single drive enough? Mm -hmm. And I would suggest that for most home users, we're getting pretty close. This is, I think this is only about 150 to $200. And this is an eight bay storage enclosure that basically sits next to your tower. So you could literally put 32 terabytes in here without any kind of special your, configuration. Your own personal cloud right there. And there you go. So I, I guess I guess we're probably getting close. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to mention in terms of desktop drive trends or, or Barracuda XT? I think we captured it. I think we did. All right. Well, thank you very much. And, appreciate uh, you having me. I appreciate you being here.